Welcome to Have Fun Make Art with Mike Quinn. This is Mike Quinn and today I'm going to make something really cool. Um, thinking about making an anteater. Uh, I want to do it freestanding and uh, just to go ahead and get started so we can see how it comes out. I'm just going to cut a little piece of clay off this uh, chunk that I have over here. Get a nice healthy dollop. What I want to do, I'm going to use this little glaze jar as the support for the middle. So, to get started, I'm going to take a piece of newspaper and just lay that over that. That way the clay won't want to stick. And then I'm just going to build this as like a, almost like a pinch pot. You want to go around and pinch it out and you're trying to make one side the, the front and one side the back. I was just looking at some of the facts on an aardvark. And it's amazing. It says that they can eat 30,000 ants or termites in one day, that they have no teeth, uh, but a specialized tongue. And uh, it's one of the few uh, egg-laying mammals besides a platypus. So was, I never knew that. That's amazing. So here we go. We got our form. And then I've got my pinch pot body started. And you can see I've left it a little bit thick. And that's just going to help me for this piece to want to hold its shape when I have it balanced up here. And that way the legs aren't supporting any actual weight. And that newspaper underneath, that'll help it release when I want to pull it off of there. So that's the body. And they have like a kind of a narrow, looks like it comes up into like a ridge on the back. The nose is really cool. That's that's the signature look for an anteater. And you can see that's pretty quick. We've already got the nose and the, most of the body. do the tail, which is also kind of unique looking. It's this big, crazy, bushy tail. So. Moisten my fingers with just a, a wet towel. Really don't want to get it super wet. And I think on the very end of their mouth, or the this nose, is the, actually where the tongue comes out. So it's, it's actually got a little mouth. So we got the mouth, nostrils, eyes, the ears, the tail. Now we'll do the legs. And they have a really weird kind of body, real beefy legs, so, and like super long, um, sharp claws. So, I'm gonna just do this kind of long, it comes down into claws on the front. So. And what's cool about this is since the being supported, I don't, I'm not worried about how strong this foot is necessarily.
these are kind of a furry creature. And I think they have like a, a ridge that, that kind of starts here and goes all the way out into the tail. It's just like a big, almost like a porcupine. It has real spiky fur on this ridge and then So then we just start adding some hair texture, fixing the ears up. Come around here and look at the front of it. Clean up under the eye here. I like to poke a hole all the way into the ear. It looks like you got a way to actually hear something. And do the uh, under lids for the eyes. These would be super small. And just start it off in the corner. And then I'll swap around to this side. Do a real small piece. Then I can come back and start adding some hair texture because these are hairy little guys. And to do hair, you know, you'll never make it look exactly like hair, I don't think. But if you do several little clumps in one direction and then go another direction and then back this way and then over here and over here, then it kind of gives it some texture and more believable when you look at it as hair. Okay, so yeah, this would be a little better angle to see the, the actual technique. And so I'm just using the very end of this tool. I want it nice and dry and clean, free of any dried clay on there on the tip. And then I just put in these little lines. And then eventually you get going a little faster. You just do these little kind of bumping motion and work it into some layers of fur. And I was saying that you can you can really make this look good when you finish it and you have the uh, stain going down into the cracks and, and a highlighted color up on top and it can really look nice. All these rough looking little cuts actually come in and look good at the end. But I just go around and peck at it, do a bunch of little lines. Then you can do bigger, you know, out here on a bigger spot, you can kind of get a little deeper. Always kind of going in line with the body. up this hair texture, come around to this side, give it a similar treatment. We want to just let the tool do the work, but I'm supporting it with my hand so it doesn't distort it too much. Me. 
Looks like I'm going to need a kickstand for the back. Same thing. We're gonna, I like to flatten it off. I think that gives a little more more rigid, rigidity. We'll do the same thing. We'll just do a round kind of support. And that'll hold that in place. And we got this guy. We can make him look back at the camera. So there you go. So we've got this to, uh, you know, a semi-finished state, but I still want to add the front claws. One of the things about an anteater that's really cool is they've got these super long claws, and that's how they dig into the ant piles and, and disturb the ants and the termites, and that's how they use their tongue to get and lap them up. But uh, So that's one of the ways we're going to make this really look like an anteater, and I think it's two claws. It's not just one. Uh, I'm going to do one pretty big one, and then one that kind of, I'll just rest it up here, and I'll do one that's a little smaller, so have the two together, and I'm going to do the littler, litter, littler one towards the middle, or towards the inside, and I'll find this end of his hand here. I'm going to put that claw on there and I'll just kind of meld it together. Then I'm going to take a, a little bead of clay and make a just a like this little earthworm shape, kind of flatten it out, come back, pick this back up and put like a little collar around that, that thing. And we can build that up and change, change that to where it looks like fur. So he's kind of got this furry little wrist going up to these giant claws. And if we keep it, like if you pose it where he's touching his body or held back in some way, that can kind of keep it from wanting to break. It's one of the things to keep in mind is how fragile this is going to be when it's done. And so the back foot, we're going to do a little different technique. Basically, it's still wet enough. I can just pull it out here and work on it. But I'm thinking this is more just like long toes and smaller, smaller uh, claws. So that'll be a job for this tool. And I really like this particular tool. So we're going to roll that one. That gives them four. Four toes. Four toed sloth. And now we can just swap it around and do the other side. Hey, thanks for tuning in. This is Have Fun, Make Art with Mike Quinn. I hope you enjoyed this little aardvark demo. Uh, it's my first one I ever built. If you like these videos, please like, subscribe, and share with all your friends.